for many of you around who've been following what's happening across the world, of course, one of the biggest uh, conversations that we had over the last year, year or so, was about all this cryptocurrency, blockchain, transactions, how we're going to decentralize them. And one of the things that Rwanda mentioned, I saw the governor earlier, and we did have that conversation sometime before, was that the central bank was not quite sure how exactly to have that conversation with the general public because there was still no financial structure within the bank to have that conversation on, on that. So that was one of those technological innovations that came to, Nobat has said it's not really a disruptor, but it really did disrupt the financial space. Let's start from there. Where are we with that? Because I know that's a crucial question. We could just clear that. And then maybe you could let us know some of those disruptors within the financial space that you've noted as the central bank. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Georgie. I think uh, probably setting the stage on the um, disruptive technology that the financial sector has gone through. True, um, now there are more talks about cryptocurrency, but let's take a step back on building on what Norbert was, was showing us. The use of artificial intelligence, um, of APIs, and then I think you're clocking a thousand rand and franc here, ha has disrupted the way financial services are offered. We have more and more digital financial services globally, but also in Rwanda. And to give you a scale, last year the uh, the value of transactions uh, through mobile uh, money reached uh, 10.2 trillion rand and franc, surpassing our GDP for the first time. So this shows really the impact and adoption of digital financial services. Coming back to your question on, on cryptocurrency, our position as central bank has not changed, uh, and why um, we really warn uh, the public and uh, um, adopted a cautious approach because of the uh, volatility and risks uh, linked to cryptocurrencies. Uh, one, these are currencies that are not backed by government. They are very volatile. To take an example, uh, Bitcoin last year uh, increased, doubled its value. I think at the, in January 2021, it was a valued around uh, $35,000. Uh, by the end of 2021, it was valued at $70,000. But we have to remember that in 2018 alone, Bitcoin lost 74% of its value. So that volatility and those huge losses that people risk when investing in those assets is why we continue to really caution the public in investing in those assets, especially retail investors. However, as the central bank, we have started a study on the uh, central bank digital currency to see what would be the benefits for Rwanda to adopt or issue such a currency, but also looking at its risk and uh, in terms of financial stability, but whether also it does not exclude uh, a portion of our population because you would need digital device to, to be able to, to use that currency. So that's where we are now, and we're hoping to have a position paper with all our findings by end of this year that would inform whether Rwanda uh, adopts digital currencies. Right, let's talk about regulation and how you've had to accommodate that. Um, maybe you could talk about, with this di new digital financial services, mm -hmm. how exactly have you been able internally to accommodate all these new ideas that are coming? Mm -hmm. Qu uh, case in point, uh, people that settle financial payments cannot be considered a bank, or it's very separate. So do you have to create separate legislation? So just help us understand how you've managed internally. Um, so this uh, fourth industrial revolution, and I was uh, joking with Crystal this morning that she's forcing us to enter into that, uh, and, and regulators were not known to be very flexible to innovation. However, I think as Rwanda, we are aligned with, with the vision of the government to become a proof of concept nation, an innovation hub. Hence, while we really, uh, in our mandate, we need to ensure financial stability, but we have to make sure that our regulation also accommodates innovators um, and such as fintechs. So one of the things as Central Bank that we have done is uh, establish what we call a regulatory sandbox, which is uh, a mechanism through which um, innovators in the financial space are given a controlled environment to test their product, their services, um, in a limited period of time, up to 12 months. 
um, and, and we sort of relax regulations or licensing requirements so that, you know, if you want to become a digital lender, you're offering payment services, before you go through the licensing process, you have um, tested your product on the market, but also understand all the requirements and are sort of educated on why you have to put in place governance, you have to make sure that you have robust, robust control systems to prevent, let's say, illicit um, flows of funds, um, that if you're let's say, want to take deposits from the public, you know that, you know, as central bank, we have to guarantee those deposits and that we know you have also the managerial and technical expertise to be able to manage those funds. So I think with that initiative, it's really one, allowing innovation in a controlled environment, but while also mitigating risks of, uh, of any entrant in the financial sector, not to destabilize our financial sector. Right. As we know, money is very scarce in this economy as we speak. So every consumer, every person that partakes need to know that their money is safe. So as a final question, mm -hmm. how does the regulator now assure the public mm -hmm. that their money is safe, secure, and a lot more catered to by the regulator? Um, so, so the first thing, as, as in we need to continue building trust so that the public even though we are entering into this digital economy and financial services are now offered digitally, that they feel that you know, their transactions are secure, um, but also that the central bank is still there to ensure uh, financial stability, as I said, but also reinforcing the consumer protection uh, laws and, and regulations. Um, so, so one, um, the, 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 the minister talked about the new um, data, personal data and privacy uh, protection law. So we have to make sure that the new entrants understand um, what it means to, to process personal data and that there are no breaches in use of that data. Secondly, in, uh, as we have more and more new entrants in the fintech space, we have to make sure that their pricing are in line with the markets, that they are not abusive rates. And I think you mentioned here the fact that digital lenders, uh, people are excited about having a loan uh, in one hour on your phone but is the interest rate you're paying on, and sometimes because it's very short-term loans, someone might say you're only paying 5%, but is it 5% per month? And if you compute that annually, it's actually already 60%. So we have to make sure that one, there's transparency and pricing, that you know the people that are managing those uh, financial institutions, because when, whenever people hear about FinTech, we have to understand that the services that you're offering are under regulation. So fintech as a whole is not regulated per se, but by the nature of the services you're offering and the risk attached to it. So I think that um, the regulatory framework, and we've had to revise uh, some of our laws and regulations to accommodate those innovations, but not forgetting really our mandate that um, we need to protect consumers, but also uh, ensure the stability of our financial sector. Perfect. Thank you. I cannot thank you enough. Please, a warm round of applause. For the people on this side of the room, please keep your hands. Wait, no, I see some of them. For the young guys in the room, do you feel like you, your money is secure? Just raise your hand. The young guys in the room. So, over 25, please. Do you feel like your money is No, the, the young, the students... You're, you feel like your money is secure? Yes, it will be? Okay. Very promising. So, oh, yeah, so that is fine. <laughs> so where, the information, we can all get it from the Central Bank website, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. So uh, very, very appreciative of all the information that you've given to us. Of course, as we said, we can always carry on the conversation when we go on break or at the tail end of the event.